It is an absolutely huge time for next-gen gaming. Brand new consoles, better than ever graphics cards, and immersive open world experiences for all of us to dig our teeth into. If you're anything like me though, you're going to want to pair your brand new gaming gear with the best TV possible. And in this video, I'm going to help you make that decision, as I've teamed up with both Xbox and LG to give you this little guide on everything gaming TV to let you know everything you need to know. It's worth kicking off by saying that now really is the right time to buy a brand new television, for several reasons. We now have cutting edge panels that are not only sharper than before, but way faster to boot. This not only gives you a more immersive visual experience with mind-blowing graphics, but the images are both clearer and more responsive thanks to the faster refresh rates. A really important consideration for many though is that high quality sets have come down in price massively and are now more affordable than ever. Let's get into a little bit more detail though and walk you through all of the technical stuff. Don't worry, as gently as possible. Whenever you buy a brand new Xbox Series X, it supports a whole lot of new features that just won't work well, if at all, on older televisions. The headline specification is 4K resolution, which packs four times more pixel than a full HD television. The difference this time around, however, is that the Xbox is far more powerful than the previous generation, and will be rendering most games in 4K resolution at 60 frames a second. Some games though actually go beyond this all the way up to 120 frames a second, which is just jaw-dropping. I had the absolute pleasure of trying this out in Gears 5 multiplayer, and the results were crazy smooth and will genuinely give you a competitive edge against any players that are stuck at 60. If you're playing on a gaming PC, however, with a brand new GPU from AMD or Nvidia, then you can of course do this in any game, so long as you have enough power inside that graphics card of course. In order to actually get this to work though, you're going to need a TV that has 4K resolution, supports 120 frames a second, and has the brand new HDMI 2.1 specification. Now this is where LG's Nanocell and OLED televisions come in, as most Nanocells and all 2020 OLED sets pack this tech as standard, with my LG C10 TV for instance having four HDMI 2.1 ports, and I'm actually already using three of them. The crazy thing is though, that if you want to go even further into the future of TVs, but do so today, then HDMI 2.1 also supports 8K resolution at 60 frames a second, and LG now have both Nanocell and OLED sets with this 8K resolution. I was stunned at CES 2020 when I saw the 8K OLED in real life, and I could honestly say that this is the best looking TV I've ever seen. 8K isn't going to be for everyone at the moment, but there is a feature that is. Auto Low Latency Mode, or A-L-L-M. I should have practiced that one first, shouldn't I? Alm? Alm? Alum? You see, TVs are usually set to a more cinematic mode by default, as this gives you the best image quality possible. But unfortunately, this does also add game-changing lag to pretty much all of your games, which is definitely not good at all. Automatic low latency mode, however, automatically swaps your TV to the game mode whenever it detects that you're playing a game, which is super useful if you don't know your way around the menu system, or you just want to save time. It works wonders on the C10 OLED bringing the input lag down to just 13 milliseconds, which is super impressive stuff. Not only that, but sets in both the Nanocell and OLED ranges support something that's known as VRR, or variable refresh rate, and in games that are unlocked, especially those that are going to play at up to 120 frames a second, this is an absolute game changer. As we progress forward into 2021, more and more games will run at an unlocked frame rate, meaning instead of a consistent 60 frames a second, you might get 85 FPS, then 90, then 80, then back to 90, which might sound great in practice, but this actually has a lot of problems when you're playing at a fixed refresh rate, because on a normal TV, this inconsistency actually gives you quite a lot of judder, or in some cases, some horrible screen tearing that doesn't look very good at all. VRR gets around this problem, however, by matching your TV's refresh rate with the game output, so you can see every frame as intended without any visual artifacts, and you're getting the minimum input lag possible. In 2020 and 2021, I think it's fair to say that bigger is definitely becoming the new standard for televisions, but you might be wondering what sort of size you should go for for your personal living room. 55 inch is arguably the sweet spot for price to performance, but I am super glad that I chose a 65 inch set for my room, and I'm even happier to see that the prices of these have come way down this year. 
Just do me a favor and be sure to measure your room before you buy a TV, as they always look smaller in the shop, and it is definitely a little bit too easy these days to get a little bit, I don't know, size happy when shopping online. A new TV will bring more than just speed and extra resolution though, as we now have something called HDR, or High Dynamic Range. And this essentially seeks to give you a better image by capturing more information in the camera, and then being able to display that on your TV, which, when it works, is fantastic. Just be aware that on a lot of cheaper sets, they say HDR because they can take a HDR signal, but then they can't really do anything with it. And you'd probably be asking yourself, why am I buying into HDR? It's not very good. When if you have a really good implementation, it is arguably the best feature about new TVs. But again, good sets are getting cheaper with brighter televisions showing off more drama in action sequences and backlight dimming systems becoming more sophisticated. With nanocell sets offering a great balance between cost and image quality. For the very best HDR experience though, I would highly advise that you look at an OLED TV, as in my eyes they just can't be beaten. With an OLED, every pixel emits its own unique source of light, which means that black is truly black, no horrible greys or murkiness, it is just jaw-droppingly good. This also solves the problem that I've always had with HDR displays, which is that while LCDs can be a little bit brighter, you always need to have backlight dimming zones behind the panel, and there's just no real way to get perfect brightness without having these pretty awful haloing effects, with some of the worst offenders even flickering a little bit during heavy scenes. With the C10, you also get a special HDR profile that will make all of your games look its absolute best, far up Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and you'll be stunned with just how good it can look. OLEDs also tend to have better motion responsiveness too, which isn't quite the same as having a faster refresh rate, is the time that it takes one pixel to change from one color to another, which in practice means that if you're playing a game like Call of Duty Warzone and you're moving around a lot, you can get a little bit of smearing with traditional sets, but OLED helps to clear this up because the time it takes to actually move those pixels from one to the next is reduced, and it makes quite a big difference actually. Now we're starting to get really technical, but again, don't worry, we'll be gentle, we have brand new formats. And while every single HDR TV that's worth its salt will have the HDR10 standard, LG takes this to the next level by supporting both Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos Audio. What is Dolby Vision, you ask? Great question. Well, it's a better version of HDR that has even more detail than regular HDR10, and is thankfully supported on LG's HDR TVs, Xbox Series X, and Ultra HD Blu-ray. Dolby Atmos Audio, on the other hand, is the next generation of sound processing, and sounds way more immersive than ever, especially if you pair it with a soundbar or some sort of home theatre setup. As you can see then, that's a long old list, or I suppose a long new list, of features trying to burst out of your Xbox. And the honest truth is that you're going to have to get a TV that's brought out in the last year or so really to properly get the most out of it and unlock all of its potential. It is crucial to remember that your TV, PC and console kind of need each other, as while you can do a lot with your television by itself, you really need to be pumping in that sweet, sweet HDMI 2.1 signal to get the maximum benefits, and vice versa. If you're looking to get a new TV this year, then there's definitely a lot to think about. But hopefully this video has been useful and it's given you all of the features really that you need to know. Maybe make yourself a little tick list. If you can tick everything off, then you know that you're getting the maximum out of your next-gen console and your money is not going to waste. I seriously can't recommend the LG OLEDs enough, as they make every show from Seinfeld to Space Force look incredible, while coming alive when fed in the Xbox secret source. Price has always been a little bit of a barrier to entry for this OLED tech, but have a look at the prices with the links down below, and I think you will be very pleasantly surprised indeed. Let me know your thoughts though on next-gen gaming. Do you have a newer TV? Are you maybe saving up for one? Are you unsure if you need one? I'd absolutely love to hear from you. Please smash that like button if you've enjoyed this video. It really does help out. You honestly wouldn't believe. Get subscribed for more videos just like this. If you want to see the full review of this TV, you can find that in the top right-hand corner, which of course is not sponsored. But LG were kind enough to actually supply this TV at the start this year, which is massive appreciated. A massive thank you to you guys for watching though, I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, won't you? And depending when you're watching this, a great holiday.